so hello everybody this is an interview with the developers for primeval horizon um i have two devs here right now we might get some later we might not i'm not sure but i definitely want to let them introduce themselves so jj take it away all right so i am the founder of primeval horizon and I started this project as more of a passion project. I became very obsessed with the genre back when I used to play like early Isle back in um, old legacy days and old Averma. It was very, uh, it was very fun. I had more charm back back uh, during that time. Was that your first but, game that you played? Maybe my first P game, but definitely not the first game. I remember I used to get to Path the Titan little bit on mobile when it came out on mobile mm -hmm. but you know it never really matched the quality that i was seeking but before i became a game developer or got interested in any of that uh, i was an artist and at the time my life goal was to you know earn art into a career mm -hmm. but my passions have shifted towards this and i am a lot more comfortable with that because i get to work with a really skilled team and it makes things just a lot easier and a lot more fun when you're working together on something especially something that's a lot bigger than yourself that makes sense how big is the team by the way i believe we have 14 ish people but not everybody's active which is why you might only see uh, mm, five devs active at once uh in the discord okay but uh yeah besides that we try to interact with the community as much as we can uh, without letting the community have too much control mm -hmm. so that they can help form the vision a little bit more so that they get something out of it and it's not just like you know us developers saying this is what we're gonna do you can't say anything about it we're they were gonna do it anyways you know we like to have the community involved and you can see that with the polls that we do and how active uh especially how active i am in the chat in the discord just talking to the members since you like art and that was something you were doing before do you do like the concepts for the game like what exactly uh are you in charge of i don't really do the concepts because i don't believe i am somebody that's as good as the concept artists we have now mm -hmm. but i do do minor concepts such as the ui concept art and that's something i've actually done recently like maybe within the past few days is i've reworked how the ui works or how the ui looks so we'll be changing the the ui you see now in uh, the test builds is only temporary so what you'll get is a lot more simplistic. It makes sense. Adrian, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Oh, yes. I am I am Adrian, and of course, I am the... I'm one of the 3D artists for the project that I'm mainly part of, like, the retopology process, and it's soon for the morphs, which I think people are excited for, like, the growth autogeny system, as well as the custom morph system that people are excited for. What do the custom morphs do? Yeah, they're just mostly cosmetics, but some of them also show like the life cycle of the animal. Like, let's just say, for example, Red starts off as scrawny, it, unless you believe in Nano Tyrannus, but that's aside the point. <laughs> and then it changes over time as it grows. Like, it, it shows from how it grows from a baby all the way to an adult and maybe up to elder. Okay. Right. He's pretty much referring to seamless growth, whereas mm -hmm. Rex is a good example of it's a body type changing as it grows because it filled different niches as it grows it's, which is something that we want to also add to our game is for rex and maybe other creatures to fill different niches throughout their uh, life cycle so that you're not stuck as just one you know just one play style your entire gameplay which just makes the juvenile gameplay very boring and, and it just encourages the idea of the juvies just being smaller adults rather than being their own thing okay so does that mean that maybe the stats that the character have might be more tuned in for a specific environment like i don't know if you plan to have different maps or not but if you do like maybe the rex on one map would have slightly different stats than a rex on a different map um uh, i don't think we're going to add tools right away that will allow you to change stats but when it comes to stats 
uh, when you're growing at least. You'll basically have, for example, a sub-adult Rix that may be a lot more speedier. It might uh, not do as much bone break, but instead do more bleed. You know, stuff like that. I know Legacy kind of did that a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, if we can, we could probably take a little bit of attention away to look at the chat, see if they have any questions. If you have any questions, just list them off. Uh, I'll be sure to read them eventually. Definitely, definitely. It is a Q&A after all. Of course, it's not just lordy lou and us too you guys can also answer questions because i want to fill the community in as well we'll be able to pause growth yes pausing growth is uh planned oh really but we have it where yeah but the only way you can pause growth is in your early stage of your uh, growth stage so that you can't just pause growth right before you hit adult Mm -hmm. You would have to pause it soon after you enter a growth stage so that it can't be abused. That's fair. That makes a lot more sense, actually. Will certain dinos and creatures be able to eat their prey alive? Um, I, I don't think that would really be possible unless you were to kill somebody and then just swallow them whole. Because you have to keep in mind the other player would have to experience basically getting eaten alive and that's not exactly fun it's, it's very one-sided and it has nothing to do with skill so i'd rather just keep that out of the game but we can probably like add an animation that looks like you're eating somebody alive at some point mm, yeah that would be i feel like that would be hard to kind of pull off i know uh the io devs have been asked the same question before and yeah there's the dog. I'm sorry about that. Sorry. Right. Dog reveal. How? Co <laughs> yeah. He's very loud. Uh, how confident are you of yourselves in the game growing big as in why the big three game has tons of potential? Uh, I'm, I'm very confident in it personally because we have offered quality that has been unseen in this genre outside of the top three. Uh, if you've been around for a while you've seen other games try to you know compete with the top three and they get abandoned uh their scams or you know something else happens they're just there's never been a, a game of our quality that's appeared basically out of nowhere that's not in the top three that was a question that i did have as well because i definitely had a lot of people asking from my last video uh, or at least it seemed to be a concern of theirs to see if this game would continue uh, the way it's going or if it would be dropped off yeah no i, I would never want to drop this project off to me it holds a lot of, of value and We've already been working on it, or at least I have been working on it by, you know, being around directing stuff and making decisions that, you know, alter the direction and vision of the game, along with level design too. But I've been part of this game's development for a little bit over two years now as the founder of it, and I still haven't lost any motivation to continue developing it. It really is something that I never want to give up on. It's like kind of like a life goal now something that if i can't complete this then uh, there isn't much purpose in life for me so it's kind of like one of your bucket list items huh a little bit it's kind of just like a, a dream i guess mm -hmm. you know people it's an ambition and it's something I'm really committed to because after this game, uh, I would like to move on to turning it into a franchise. So, you know, I would like to be able to offer you guys a, a short film or something after the game succeeds. Oh, based and on stuff the game? Like that. Yeah, it'll be within universe. But mm -hmm. I want to be able to offer you guys more. I want to expand upon what the game already has and expand its universe after we succeed. Oh, that would be really cool, especially with the lore. Could you actually tell us what made you decide to make the lore kind of alien based? Well, the goal was to make the lore very flexible because I know with certain other projects, they're limited by their own story. Mm. And I don't want to run into the same thing. Uh, Primeval Horizon has always been a project where we want anything to pretty much be possible. And for that to, you know, work out, we have to give a story where anything is possible. Mm. And with this alien-like story and how it involves, like, altering the universe and timelines and things like that, it really does make 
anything possible within this uh, universe that we're presenting. Oh yeah, I really like the concept arts you have for them. So far, I didn't realize how much bigger the aliens are actually were going to be compared to the dinosaurs or compared to people yeah, in general. It's just, yeah, it's just concept for now. Like everything is subject to change. Mm -hmm. We we are going to get more concept art done, of course. And in fact, recently, when I say recently, I mean like today, we may be working with a developer that used to be on Beast Bermuda's team and they're going to be doing uh, some animations and rigs for us. Ooh, okay. That's very interesting. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah, they did the Koa, Lurd, uh, Para, and um, probably a few others, but those are the ones they talked about. Some very good animation work. Mm -hmm. I think I saw a couple of other um, questions in the chat if you want to answer the next one from there. Yeah, Glaze, you don't got to worry about this project being abandoned unless I like die or something. Mm -hmm. And for its funding being stolen, I mean, if I wanted to steal anything, I would have I done it by now, but I pretty much put everything back into this project instead. Give this man the, the applaud of, a round of applause, anyone? <laughs> Randy. Isn't there a clap ability no. <laughs> in these dev live stream things? I feel like there is somewhere. I might just be I'm thinking. I'm not sure. It, it might be, uh, yeah, I thought it was going to be a soundboard or something, but I guess not. Will dinos be able to grab others as so abilities some would some would be way more efficient of course but i do want to know if all dinos or almost all will be able to grab stuff at some point yeah i think most if not like around half of the dinosaurs mainly carnivores are able to grab stuff and that's either with their claws or with the the thrash ability because how the thrash works is you have to initially grab onto somebody or latch onto them before you're able to thrash it's not just you know a button and then all of a sudden you're thrashing them there's a lot more steps in the process to make it a lot more interactive mm, okay actually since we're on that topic do you think you'll have any sort of like finishing moves or is it just going to be like they fall over or ragdoll yeah that's something i also talked about a little bit in uh, the general chat uh, today and something that i never talked about or revealed before is we are planning to add uh, a downing system and an execution system so if your creature takes a certain amount of damage that isn't like overkill for example if your creature with 1000 health and you get hit by an attack that does like maybe a thousand hundred uh damage that would kill you in any other game but in this game that would put you into a down state where you're not able to move but you can recover if you are spared or if the other person that attacked you gets killed right afterward mm. okay but if if the damage is way too overboard for the amount of health you have left for example let's say you have a thousand health and you get hit with a thousand seven hundred damage then that's gonna one shot you and instantly put you into the ragdoll animation uh, instantly kill you okay and while you're in that down state, we want to be able to offer execution animations as part of our, uh, similar to our cosmetic system. So going to be able to, you know, pick up executions and stuff and use those animations on players to finish them off. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that would be a, a lot more interactive with players because you have different states now of which you can interact with the player outside of just fighting them. You can interact with them after you fight them while they're downed and while you're finishing them off rather than just you know one shotting them and you know it's all over with it's kind of boring that is a lot different than uh what i was expecting so i'm glad to hear it uh will emotes be added something like pilot titans uh, yes so we want to add some emotes but we're, we aren't sure which ones just yet especially with the uh, this new developer coming onto our team sometime soon here uh creating emotes will be a lot easier there's another question about um how you updated the backer skins and if the general design has changed so the backer skin design has not changed but we are making plans to make the other variants have different uh, patterns so now if you obtain the backer skin you're going to obtain the option to select any of its variants so you can be a 50 dollars tier uh patreon now and you'll have basically the, the 
any tier of backer skin you want now, but it'll only be for one playable that you can put it on if you're the $50 two tier, that is. Of course, with the higher tier, you can have more skins to put on more playables. And this is through uh, the Patreon, right? Yes, you can also use the PayPal though. It doesn't matter if which one you use as long as you donate the amount that's equal to that tier. Okay. And you can also stack up your donations to also afford a higher tier. So for example, if you wanted to donate over time uh, and do $50 for the next six, month, six months in order to get $300 total, then you would be able to obtain the rewards inside the $300 tier. Okay. Oh, uh, and is there any inspiration for the bagger skins, the designs that you know of? Not really. We did have some references for like the color palette, but no, um, the idea was uh, originally mine, I believe, where we would have like gold and the, the blues and stuff. Uh, did I originally come up with the, with the lore, the general idea? Yes. Uh, we don't have a writer right now, so yeah, I did come up with the, the lore and just expanded upon it. Mm -hmm. Serato is, of course, the first playable to be available. We have heard about the what the adult will sound like, what the baby sound like. Now, the baby sounds aren't being worked on just yet. We have the baby bite sound, and it sounds kind of cute, but uh, it's not a priority right now for the baby sounds to be worked on. We're going to focus on the adult sounds first, and then likely move on to Lefango, and then we'll do the baby sounds first. Um, so anything about Mac, according to Dizzy Twister? Anything about what? It says here, will the survival game be available for Mac? Uh, That's PC, most, right? It's, yeah, it's kind of sort of. It's, it's like, like Apple PC. It's like to Windows. Yeah, so for Mac, it's most likely not going to be compatible with that because Macs are not meant for gaming. They're more for, more like traveling with your work. You know, you know, you work with your workspace. It's not meant for gaming, and even gaming laptops aren't really very good at gaming either. But even a gaming laptop would be uh, way better, considering you would have Windows. You were trying to expand to console too, weren't you? Yes, one day. Oh, uh, after we've uh, gained enough funding and the game is going well and everything, we would like to be able to move over to console for like the. Uh, more up to date generations so that we don't lose any visual fidelity or anything when we do expand to consoles because i know uh, Pedal titans kind of limited themselves by expanding over to mobile considering mobile has a lot more uh, limitations it's also harder to use though they do have um yeah what are those like steam deck that kind of helps a little bit mm -hmm. oh yeah steam decks are they're pretty popular uh recently and that could also work you know you're running steam on it anyways i don't see why it, would, why it wouldn't work we'd be able to eat dinos alive in their down state Mm, maybe uh in our storyline humans are still alive i mean the way the lore it works is anything could be alive like literally anything because it could just be from a different universe if they're not existent in the current universe so like different things that existed at different periods in time are going to be existing at the same time in the game yes that's basically what so <laughs> That basically answers the question of why are all these creatures from different time periods on this island? Now you know why. <laughs> That's interesting. Do you have like a in-lore explanation for that? Yeah. Like I said, you, you basically have... I don't want to give too much detail, but mm -hmm. there is a, a way the, the, that all these creatures uh, from different time periods uh, have ended up on this island. Oh, okay. And it's not just this island. You know, of course, we have... <laughs> other maps and stuff so you would have to also give a reason why they're also on this other map so yeah we like i said no uh, we made the lore to where it's very flexible and it's uh, able to still explain what's going on in the game at the same time we won't have any humans though or at least no planned humans is there any other questions i missed i'm gonna go to the recent chats if i missed any of your questions just repeat them real quick and for anybody that's not answering or Anybody that's not giving questions, could you uh, take a second to uh, uh, stop chatting so that you can give the people that are asking questions some space? Are you playing planning to add Spinosaurus or any type of Spinosaurus? Uh, we do have. Do we still have Icti or, or did we? We we have Icti and okay. and yeah, Mimus. Okay, yeah. I was saying I wasn't sure if we still had Icti. I'm pretty sure we. I, I know. I know that animal sure. not gonna get taken out anytime soon. Even though, in my personal opinion, this is just me. 
it's fine you know, the better option but i'll not let my body get that photo yeah so you have <laughs> you have ichthyo Ven vinegar uh, man i'm so bad at pronouncing <laughs> these names and sukamimus but as for spinosaurus itself we have made votes box. about it and stuff and it hasn't turned out well so spinosaurus will likely be a, a mod sometime in the far future no. we'll be sure that you guys get a quality spinosaurus yeah, yeah, one day mm -hmm. um what's our biggest dinosaur on the roster so far uh biggest carnivore or biggest uh dinosaur in general because if it's the biggest creature in general then it would be uh, dreadnoughts Dreadnoughts. However, that is okay. un un however that is unofficial due to the fact that it wouldn't be playable by default oh okay so like it, special it, circumstance it has, it has to be enabled on the server mm -hmm. probably because it's so big huh yeah well yeah yeah because then you might run into issues with that considering how much they weigh and how large they are you could you know completely change the apex ecosystem true will you actually have like give admins the ability to limit the numbers of a specific creature in their servers uh yes we we do want to offer a, a large range of tools similarly to like what rust has we want to like give options to you know move corpses and stuff you know teleport people maybe freeze people in place and stuff just a lot of options and um different things that you can do to better customize your server and handle players in your server which includes moderation what about modding will you let the game be modded yeah we're planning f for um for the game to be compatible with modding like using the steam workshop in the future but we have yet to really uh put much attention into that area just yet because it is a uh it is an area that We've not really had much experience in just yet, but we will get into it uh, sometime in the future and, you know, do what we can to offer modding to you guys so that you can, as a community, create your own content that you would like to see in the game that is already present. That would be awesome. I think the community would love that. I don't know if the people in the dev stream right now have anything to say about it, but I do think uh, a lot of people would be interested in being able to do that with your servers. Yeah. Uh, give me one minute. Yeah. As Trike, have Titans has Eo Trike, Primeval Horizon have to Yeah, we have the big Jasmosaurians. <clears throat> I mean, a mod will put yeah. All right, so Glazed asked if there would be quality of life extra idle animations or animation tweaks such as heavier breathing when it's recently attacked, panting animations or hurt animations when damaged. Yes, yeah, small details like that are always really nice in very like detailed games or AAA games and stuff. And we would like something like that in the future, but it would have to be saved for the future considering it is a small detail um we do want variants for like different types of vital animations that play like you see in other games would there be any game live events like a specific battle royale uh battle royale would be an event that would probably be more like a game mode so maybe you want to imagine one of those massive aliens or whatever like traversing the map you can just like hear its footsteps and everything like heavy footsteps from across the map and maybe this was like during nighttime while it's thunderstorming as well it'd be scary oh yeah there is gonna be weather in game huh yeah we might also switch to a different sky uh asset as well i've been looking at this other sky asset and it seems pretty nice it's just not as optimized as ultra dynamic sky mm -hmm. so that's ultra like the dynamic only downside sky is pretty good yeah it is it, i think ultra dynamic sky just needs to be customized more to be made look better like yeah. you know uh triple a standards is anti-cheat planned yes as somebody that has dealt with hackers and stuff in the aisle like very closely before we would like to prevent hackers from you know ruining the experience and also by adding a lot more tools for admins to use they can better moderate those hackers but we would want a good anti-cheat in place alongside with some parameters to you know catch cheaters for example i don't think anybody's gonna be flying around but let's say if a rex is flying around they're instantly going to get kicked from the server because the server is going to detect that we'll try server tops for it is to be playable twister we do not have a triceratops on the roster we have a taurosaurus though which is very similar and it lived uh during the same time uh triceratops did as well yeah. yeah i think they both i think it's taurosaurus and triceratops both live in the same formations together yeah so taurosaurus have... just has a much larger frill and you can still have a frill like a trike as well i'm pretty sure tauros had uh frills like trike sometimes too yeah i think their heads are also larger overall yeah 
So it gives that's them why more. People think. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> uh, but it's why people think that Trike is uh, just or uh, Toro is an adult Trike. Hey, thank you, uh, idiot spot. Oh, there goes the dog. But uh, I appreciate it. What the dog doing? Mm -hmm. uh, so since we know that the game is multiplayer, will you also think about having a single player mode of any kind? Yeah, that is one of the game modes that we do have planned. Single player. And it, it'll require a lot of AI work to make uh enjoyable but i feel like it's it'll offer players a good way to enjoy the game if they don't have internet or if they want to practice uh will there be a story for it or just you know do your own thing so for single player the, the main attraction would be for practice or people that maybe don't have internet at the time mm -hmm. as for story elements uh that is possible but it's not guaranteed right now and for pretzel uh do you think you'll be able to catch up to the other games in the genre mainly the island how the titans and mechanics player base playables and stuff like that i don't think it's a matter of catching up because none of these games except maybe path of titans is competitive uh the other projects are pretty much purely passion and they don't really care for uh growing much larger larger than they already are they're pretty uh satisfied with where they are currently and this is something that's pretty much already been confirmed i think there's always going to be space for us or any game in this genre to grow no matter what time you get into it. it doesn't matter when you start doing things it just matters how well you're doing it because that's what's going to catch people's attention and is there a rough eta for the backer build it's hard to say at the moment but we're getting there we're really close to providing a, a backer build or a new update to the backer build i know there's already a build up on steam privately but the build that includes multiplayer should be out relatively soon probably within like maybe a week oh really a week yeah it might be we're just figuring out some small issues was there any like questions that are answered and my answer was like you know not understandable because of the dog the, was it quality of life animations that you were talking about yeah so the quality of life animations let me find that oh yeah we'll just add, add those animations later on because they're minor details that um uh, triple a games usually contain um you want to prioritize the, you know, foundation of the creature first by giving it the necessary animations. And then we'll work on the small details afterwards. Okay. So from what I'm getting so far from like the information you've given about the game, is the vibe of the game more like exploratory, kind of fascinating than like horror or mystery? I feel like it has a lot of potential in both of those aspects. And I believe you can have both of those aspects, but it's going to depend on... The the scenario that you're or the environment That's will fair. the groves of fruit and nut trees be a thing will groves of fruit and nut trees be a thing uh there might be something equivalent to that but we don't have anything specific uh plan that's like that you just yet but we do have like a set of like different foliage diets and stuff for the herbivores uh planned right now let me see what about a science fiction biome yeah that's already confirmed will be some sort of speculate speculative evolution or more strange thing could be either one not really we have complete freedom with the sci-fi side of the game we can just do whatever what about an in-game of a loot to buy skin and cosmetic can you buy can you hear buy also something with using IRO money i almost had a stroke reading that um <laughs> i think they're just asking I'm, I'm, if they I'm, I'm, can I'm, buy the skins with real money yeah if you want to like achieve or obtain cosmetics the easy way without grinding for it, then you could just pay for it if you want. At least that's what's planned. It's not going to be pay to win or anything. Like, if you want to get it without, like, uh, paying money, then you just play the game. Uh, favorite creature in the roster and why? Yang. And it's not even related to the roster or anything. It's just that Yang is a very unique creature to me. I think it's really cool. Really? Why? It's like a big metric. You don't get those. It's like the perfect combination between an Allosaurid and a, a, a Bellosaurid. Mm -hmm. And I think it really it looks really cool because of that okay because the billow swords are cool like everybody loves the billow swords true even though they can be kind of ugly they're ugly and but they're cute <laughs> that's true yeah i would also recommend that the player can only have one account so when the hacker is banned they can't create another one for the selected ban time um i don't know if twister is still in here but to answer that you can't do that or else people would already be doing that for their games and the only way you can do that is by ip banning them 
and even that's not really a permanent solution. But when you IP ban somebody and that hacker moves out of their house or something, then the person that's going to be taking that IP next is going to be taking that ban as well. Well, the hacker gets a new IP and is not banned anymore. And then you got hardware bans and hardware bans are also an issue because hackers can just sell their hardware to somebody else and you know, all of a sudden that person's banned. Mm. So there is no way to really permanently get rid of a hacker. You can only just make their experience a lot harder for them. What do you think about different math rosters and possibly error swaps in game? Uh, that's something that community servers would have to do themselves with the tools that we offer them. So if they want a map with like a specific with specific playables on it, they can do that. And if they want to like match in a specific era, then they can have just that era of playable on that map. I'm gonna go down to the recent messages. Uh, anybody that sends GIFs or just memes, I'm just gonna time you out because it's making things a lot more difficult to, you know, read. I'm trying to see questions and I'm just seeing any everything that isn't question we love memes but just yeah, yeah, this, is, this, isn't, yeah this is an appropriate time but um if i haven't asked you the question uh could you please repeat it just repeat it in chat would you add any crocodilian in the game like perisugus and dinosugus uh we had dinosugus swimmery planned at one point which got turned into sarko and sarko was replaced for smilosugus which is a tri uh, triassic creature which is also a uh, crocodilian like but um we won't have any massive large uh, crocodilians like Dinosuchus, considering their playstyle is very oppressive and very unfun for the players that deal with them. Oh, true. They're just really strong. Yeah, the playstyle, it, it just doesn't work. You're sitting in the water until you, you pretty much one-shot somebody with, with your lunge and drum, or you just take them into the water and just bite them to death and they can't do anything about it. So, yeah, that, that playstyle in general is just very flawed, and it's kind of unfortunate how that's turned into the, the generic croc playstyle in the genre mm. but uh we want to offer something different with uh our semi-aquatics or aquatics like required land time mm, yeah that's probably one of the things we can do but uh let me see do you have any sci-fi mutations planned for the dinos uh, mutations no but for skins, uh, yes. So, like, if you want to have a glowy skin, we will have those for people uh, or for servers that allow those skins. Because obviously, we want to appeal to both realism players and sci fi players. So, if you want to maintain the realism, then a server is likely going to disable any sci fi aspects. And that may also include any skins that glow or something. But we will offer <laughs> that for the sci fi players. Since you've mentioned that, do you have any idea of like the limits? For for nesting, genetics, the planned illnesses that um, some of the dinosaurs are going to be experiencing in the game. Could you repeat that one more time? Like, do you have an idea of what your limits will be for nesting and genetics and the illnesses? Um, it's hard to really tell you the limits, but we do have uh, quite a bit of uh, genetic stuff planned, like a lot of different um, incest uh, morphs or whatever from the results of incest. Like, maybe you'll be more vulnerable to bleeding out. Or or you'll maybe have um, a deformed head, or maybe you have like two, ar uh, three arms, or something like that. <laughs> that would be but crazy. That, yeah, that would be like very far down the line, probably, because it does sound difficult to do. But it is something that we have planned. Okay. As for uh, as for uh, about illnesses, we want different illnesses for like different things. So like you might get ill from drinking dirty water because you know it might have parasites in it. And when it comes to dirty water. It's not going to be like Pelotitans, by the way, because I know that's very annoying. Mm -hmm. It'll be based on not only the area of where the water is, but also the activity in the water. So let's say somebody dies in a water source and their body, uh, their like rotting body starts to influence the quality of the water. You know, you, you would want to start taking bodies out of the water so that you don't, you know, pretty much make your own water source uh, dirty. So that would clean the water out? Um, that's one of the ways. It's more like preventing the water from being dirty. But rivers will also uh, pretty much always be a viable uh, water, water source considering it's moving water. It's pretty much always going to be fresh. That's really going to make scavengers but, um, kind of valuable then. Yeah. Um, let's see. The Trello roadmap 
plans very far ahead when it's completed what will happen in a second game as a live service game we're likely just gonna keep on adding more content on there there's still a lot more we can do but a second game is planned it's not gonna be a dinosaur one, though it'll be in the survival genre and share the same universe but it will not have dinosaurs but technically it can have anything but i want to be more creative with it uh, please try to like avoid having full-on conversations while people are answering questions you can go to no mic if you would like to like discuss um the answers to the questions but i want to keep uh, mainly questions inside this the calls chat yes yeah, so there i'm not gonna go on a rant though. since you have we're talking about the water system i think they did that mainly to kind of encourage people to migrate you guys are having a migration system too right yeah it, it's gonna be uh pretty basic it, it's actually kind of similar to what the io ended up going with even though we figured hers out beforehand, but I mean, there's only so much you can really do with migration anyways. So really? I'm not going to claim like it's similarly. It's not going to be as frequent, probably. It's probably just going to be a once in a while thing. I don't think it's going to, I'm not going to like claim anybody copied somebody else or whatever, but yeah, it's going to be similar to that. It just won't be as like constant. So you're not like always having a migration. Yeah, I did find the aisles, at least the way they executed it to be a bit difficult to understand, mainly because you get to the area where you're supposed to be for the migration and nothing really happens you don't see like more ai or creatures that are on your diet list you know in that area yeah. i couldn't really tell what the purpose of it was the way they executed yeah, it yeah i i feel like migrations are a good idea but the way uh they execute it is a little bit poor because then you don't really they're kind of taking away from finding your diet anywhere else but at those migration zones half of the time Mm -hmm. And it also kind of creates hotspots as well when you have those migration zones rather than having equal player spread. I know those players are moving, but you know, it's still going to turn into a hotspot. Yeah, it's true. Uh, what was your Rex question, uh, dear? Are you planning on any adding any mammals later on for the Cenozoic update? Yes. Or for the roster, Cenozoic roster? How strong exactly would Rex be? Like how many creatures would it take to kill him and how many to kill a dread? That's something I really can't tell you because while we have the stats, we haven't been able to test those stats because rex isn't in the game or it isn't like a playable in the game that's finished like it's only uh it's getting its model reach apologize right now it doesn't have rig it doesn't have textures it doesn't have animations it doesn't yeah. have coding it, you will get there but it's gonna be a while mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm when i say a while i'm not gonna take like five years first you know get a little bit of work done on rex but you know it'll take a little bit oh, g has a question about the glowy bioluminescent skins that you were talking about earlier um, uh, where is that? I just clicked on there. They linked it above uh, Deer's question. I'm seeing, would you add any South African dinosaur like Hey and Tapas? I've never heard of that dinosaur i'm sorry but we might have something similar to it because we do have a very diverse roster we try to keep it diverse i am not seeing the glowy thing though if you have and asked that question uh please repost it if you can won't you think it would be unfun for glowy skins to be easily accessible like that i find it having cool glowy skins and such being a rare site very fun to experience and my and to just get well they're not gonna be too easily accessible because you'll have to unlock them in the first place and to unlock them they might have different circumstances to do so and as for when it comes to like rarity of certain skins the backer skin we have now isn't going to be available after release and you'll know who has a backer skin because no other we're not going to allow any other custom skin to have a skin like the arcane backer skin so we're not going to have anybody try and copy that to try and you know basically get a you know backer skin for free so be being able to have that like glow and the the gold texturing and all that that's got a pretty rare site to have. did you guys plan on making like a gameplay trailer when you're ready to make one yeah we do want to have a trailer uh for our crowdfunder or our crowdfunding campaign we have a, a video editor that's on board with us right now that's pretty good and we also have somebody planned to work with for the music i'm not sure if we'll be able to afford the music by that time but we'll find out but i'm telling you guys now that you know as soon as we have the funding for music you're getting music from the 
same person that's uh, done the iconic soundtracks for the aisle. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you that because I have already been in contact with them for like probably months now. And, you know, that's what we're going to be planning on doing. Mm-hmm. Is there going to really be cool like person. a private beta before then or after it? Yeah, it'll the release or the game will be private on Steam until uh, we're able to go into early access. But during the crowdfunding, we'll have it. Uh, we won't have it like private when it comes to visibility. We'll have it there, but it just won't be downloadable just yet. So you can wishlist it while it's on while it's crowdfunding. Mm-hmm. Would there be broken belt injuries like an Alice horse getting smacked by a podcast and it broke it, his jaw? And will be injuries like that affect how you're done? Will eat, walk, or rest? Yeah, we do have locational uh, injuries. So let's say you get bit on your tail by a Rex then you're going to have worse turn rate. And if you get bit on your legs, you know, you obviously that will impair your speed. And if you get bit on your torso, that'll affect, you know, oxygen, stamina, stuff like that. You know, get bit on your head, that's going to fracture your skull. It's going to affect how much damage you do and stuff like that as well. Yeah, we've thought of that before. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything else? Yes, uh, dear. We do plan to make more games after Evil Horizon, but we have to see how far we get first. I'm confident we'll get far, but it's uh, pretty much all about when because obviously <laughs> we don't live forever mm-hmm. uh lord did you have any uh questions of your own i'm gonna uh, give chat a little bit of a break it's very slowed down um i think the only other questions i have is um more about the ai like how complicated do you think you'll be planning to make the ai so we, it's important for ai to not appear to be too much like players so we've pretty much separated ai to be a uh, basically only uh, creatures that aren't playable so that you're able to recognize an AI when it is AI. Um, But we do want to give it behaviors like seeking out food, seeking out water, uh, you know, roaming around and doing uh, randomized interactions as if they were like a a living creature. We don't want them to just be roaming around and, you know, they run away if they're low health or something. (laughs) They just, they become free food. They're not really much, uh, much challenge or very interactive. Okay. So definitely not just, you know, they spawn in and they exist. Yeah. They're not going to be free food that just walks around and that's all they do. And it'll mostly be AI if you do the single player mode. Yes. For AI and multiplayer, we would want it to scale how much AI spawns based on how players are in the server. And because there is no reason for AI to be spawning in a player dense area. It also encourages players that are hungry uh, but can't really hunt anything to leave that player dense area and explore other parts of the map to find food. Will the AI be like playable dinosaurs or they or are they their own separate thing? They'll be their separate thing for multiplayer, but for single player, we want to be able to make AI for pretty much uh, the entire roster, which is not take a while. Will AI also serve as environmental ambience, so even if it's not supposed to be killed or hunted, uh, somewhat like that, yeah. So when it comes to like current plans, by the way, we are working on Lufango's rig. So we're going to get Lufango rigged so that we can get some Lufango animations uh, soon enough here. Um, Serato is going to resume a little bit of its animation work. You know, get a vaulting animation done by uh, hopefully our new animator. And uh, what else? Yeah, we're getting title cards done. You know, different designs, stuff that's outside of the game. While we're uh, finishing up the, the build for Steam so that you guys can, you know, host your own servers or join somebody else's server. Although... The servers will be small, at least, you know, you'll get a taste of what we're uh, trying to go for and see that, you know, we're all, we're doing something that's legit as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when it comes to how we stick out compared to other games, we offer a lot of like different things, again, for both realism and sci-fi players. And we try to add things that are both immersive and fun and not try and lean too heavy on the realism if it sacrifices the fun. And a lot of these games in this genre happen to be passion projects, so they're not really striving to improve at every opportunity they can, unfortunately. And we want to be different that way. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'd like to be very competent, because I am competent. Mm-hmm. And it's why we're able to produce really high quality, is because we're very competent about what we're doing. We want to 
always strive to you know do better and better but uh yeah uh do you have any more questions already um no i think that is pretty much it for now i do gotta go in like five minutes so if there's anything else you would like to tell people that they should know about their game or are there any other um, questions you want to answer from the audience that'd be nice to do yeah for sure yeah we can close this up within the next uh five minutes will chill better be able to carry kills up to high places like the freezing cliffs most likely because that's something i've noticed uh herrera doesn't have in the aisle is it, it can't uh carry things up trees for some reason even though it's supposed to be very adept at tree climbing and stuff so yeah we will definitely like to give you the option to carry kills up a tree if you're able to climb as long as that kill is like you know the same uh the same size as you or smaller similar to uh, a jaguar even if it's a little bit unrealistic like again it's for the fun who cares are insects planned background or ai um if insects are ever ai they would be a food be a food source if if not, then they would be in the background. pH wallpapers, you'll have to wait until we get more renders for that to happen. But we would definitely love to do some more wallpapers. That would be very cool. Uh, if any of you have any more questions, uh, let's list them off so that we can uh, close this uh, soon here. But it was really nice answering your guys' questions. Playable AI DLC, that's interesting. What do you think of Playable AI DLC for the non-playable AI multiplayer? The AI will likely still be playable. Yeah. It'll just be have to be toggled by server owners when the backer build releases will the map be limited to a smaller part of it right now yeah i am creating a a smaller map for uh people that are testing multiplayer so that they have a smaller area to just run around in and test things rather than getting lost on the big map even though the big map isn't that big it's not like even close to v3 size or anything is pochtasuka's plan for the game it's been considered but no i think the closest you'll get to that is prestasuka's and borosuka's what about dlc in general extra skins and more of dlc it that's possible it is likely we'll have some dlc content in the future but again not will be paid away i mean it's not fortnite as much as we like to meme on it <laughs> yeah that's true doing a lot of collabs like that i think you kind of lose your own identity yeah. it depends on how far you do not go with the collabs but yeah i mean technically we could partner with uh universal someday if we tried to Ooh, you know yeah. try and get like uh like a jurassic park rex uh cosmetic it would be really cool if you guys could get like a ride at Universal Studios or something like that. That'd be awesome. Oh, that, that costs. That no feels like a so dream, bad. though. It is. Yeah, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that far. Like, <laughs> if it happens, then that's that's sick. But that costs millions of dollars, and then you got to think of upkeep and everything. Yeah, it's not something I would expect to show up like really soon, but that's like maybe 10 years in the future is what I'm thinking. Yeah, uh, when you edit this video, yeah, I want people to know that we're legit. You know, we've been at this for quite a bit, even though like, even though we're just now getting uh, a multiplayer build ready, it's been a, a learning experience for all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think that alone makes it worth it and i, I want to be able to go really far with this game and i'm pretty confident that we can because we have uh, so much potential and i uh, and i really mean that it's not just you know it's not that people just say it to say it and this project does have a ton of potential we could do so much we could change the entire genre with i agree thank you guys so much for your time i appreciate everybody that came into the chat and asked questions and i appreciate you devs here for talking about the game and you know taking the time to clarify a couple things for the audience that is very interested in what you have um guys make sure that if you are interested in this game they have a youtube channel and a discord as well that you can join and watch all the work that they do yourself you don't have to take my word for it or his word for it you can come see it yourself thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video